19 says cosecant divided by cotangent equals secant divided by cosine squared plus sine squared. Interesting. Okay. Um, there's some pretty obvious things. Uh, I'm hoping that the right hand side kind of jumps out at you as the denominator just being 1. So I'm just going to write that as um, 1 over cosine over 1. Secant's 1 over cosine. And then cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So I've got uh, 1 over cosine divided by 1 over 1. And then I'm going to think about what I need. I need cosecant, which is 1 over sine times cosine over sine. That's, what I, that's my goal, right? So when I look at that, um, interesting. What if I think about the fact that I need a cosine over sine in the denominator, which means I need the cotangent in the denominator. And how about I multiply by cotangent on top and bottom of this fraction over here, which same thing is saying um, cosine over sine. So I'm gonna multiply top and bottom by cosine over sine, because that's what I need in my denominator. And in my denominator, I do get what I need. I get the fraction cosine over sine. And in the numerator, I have the cosines can go away, and I'm left with 1 over sine, which equals cosecant over cotangent. And there we go. That was kind of interesting. I had to use my, um, I had to, I had to use my, the goal, cosecant over cotangent, in order to figure out what to do for this side. I knew it was 1 over cosine over 1. And so if I multiply by cotangent on top and bottom, then I get cotangent in the denominator. And then the numerator falls into place. Okay, number 20. Number 20 says cotangent squared times cosecant squared equals cotangent squared. going from a lot of different directions on this one. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and do um, left to right first and see what, just play around with it. Cotangent squared is cosine squared over sine squared. Cosecant squared is 1 over sine squared. So that's the same thing as cosine squared over sine to the fourth. Cotangent squared plus one. Hmm. I replaced. Sine squared with one minus cosine squared. Would that even help? Or cosine squared? No. I don't like that. So I don't think I'm going to do that. Okay. I tend to like pluses and minuses better anyway. I'm going to keep that in mind of what I'm supposed to get, but let me just see. So if I go right to left, um, cosine squared over sine squared plus 1 over 1 common denominator sine squared. Then I'm left with cosine squared. Um, plus sine squared over sine squared. The numerator simplifies down to 1, so I do get it into a single term, 1 over sine squared. Okay. So then, oh, well, no wonder it was a mess. I said cosecant is supposed to be secant. Rude. Okay, I'll come back to that in a second. Okay, I was about to say, ding, this is not working out. I would have had cosine... Whatever. Cosine squared over sine squared times 1 over cosine squared. Then I would have gotten 1 over sine squared, which is cosecant squared. And using my Pythagorean identities, I know that that's um, cotangent squared plus 1. So, um, yeah, that actually is a whole lot easier when you write down the problem correctly. Whoops. Okay. 
But if I were going from right to left and I was trying to get two cotangent squared times secant squared, then I think what I would do at this point, I have one over sine squared, right? If I thought about this, if I thought about what cotangent squared is, it's cosine squared over sine squared, and then secant squared is one over cosine squared. So it looks like what I did in order to go from here to there is I canceled out cosine squares, which means to go from right to left, I would have to manifest them. I would have to multiply by cosine squared on the top and by cosine squared in the bottom. And then I could say, well, let's let this be cotangent squared times, and then let's let that be secant squared. And then that's done. So if I go left to right, it's pretty straightforward. If I go right to left, I've got to um, make sure that I think to create those cosines in the denominator. But the only way that I knew that was, I mean, I knew I had 1 over sine squared, and I thought, well, cotangent squared is cosine squared over sine squared, and secant squared is 1 over cosine squared. So in fact, I just need a cosine squared in the top and the bottom. All right, 21. So on number 21, I've got cosine times tangent squared plus 1 equals secant. All right, so um, when it, like, just looking at it, it seems pretty clear that it would be easier to work the left-hand side to get it to the right-hand side. So, um, okay, I'm going to use Pythagorean identities, but if you don't recognize the first, then I'm going to go ahead and um, show you what I would do if I were to do um, just sines and cosines and see what happens. So, tangent squared plus 1. Tangent squared plus 1 is secant squared. Yeah? So I could just go ahead and rewrite this as cosine times secant squared. But secant squared is 1 over cosine squared. One of the cosines would go away, leaving me with 1 over cosine, and 1 over cosine is secant. And we're done. So that's one option. Um, another option is that's going left to right. Let's go left to right again, only this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace tangent with sine squared over cosine squared lay it out that way. So sine squared over cosine squared plus 1. I'm going to distribute my cosine, so I've got cosine times sine squared over cosine squared plus cosine. I'm going to cancel out a cosine, and I'm left with sine squared over cosine plus cosine over 1. I'm going to do a common denominator, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by cosine. This becomes cosine squared, so my numerator becomes sine squared plus cosine squared. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1 over cosine, which is secant. So, either way works out, going left to right. I don't think I would try right to left, just because there's no reason. Um, yeah, I wouldn't do it. But, in actuality, all it is is multiply top and bottom by cosine. So, just like here, we canceled out a cosine. If you just multiply secant, I'm moving my mouse over the, <laughs> the video like you're going to be able to see that. If I were to multiply this on by cosine on top and bottom, then this cosine would be that cosine, and then 1 over secant is 1 over cosine, so those two cosine squares would just be the same thing as secant squared in the numerator, and that's tangent squared plus 1. But. Okay. Let's look at 22. says um, secant times cotangent squared equals cosine times 1 plus cotangent squared. Alright. On this one, I am going to, I'm going to talk about the right hand side. Just because I noticed that 1 plus cotangent squared and 1 plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared. So if I do that, let that be cosecant squared. 
and then rewrite it. So I've got cosine times cosine squared over sine squared. Then I think what I could do, let's see. Oh, cosecant squared, Jennifer, is just one over sine squared. Okay. So here's what I've got. I've got cosine over sine squared. I need a cotangent and a secant. I know that cotangent squared is um, cosine squared over sine squared. I only have one cosine in the numerator. And I also need a secant, which is um, a cosine in the denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply top and bottom by cosine. And then here's what I end up with. Cosine times cosine is cosine squared over cosine times sine squared, which is the same thing as saying 1 over cosine, which is this part, times cosine squared over sine squared. So if I just split up, um, not by, not with addition or subtraction, but literally just break it up, you know what I mean? It'd be like me saying that um, 2 over 5 times 4 is the same thing as 2 fifths times 1 fourth. You can, I mean, it's just how the multiplication works in fractions. And then that is secant, and that is cotangent squared. Now that's just how I see it. It's not necessarily how you have to see it. Um, you could probably do some sines and cosines work with the right hand side. I probably wouldn't do it with the left hand side because creating addition or subtraction is kind of annoying. But there we go. All right, and then we'll do number 23 to finish out page three. obvious thing is to just do it in terms of sines and cosines. So left to right, sine over cosine times cosine squared over sine squared. Um, sines and cosines simplify out. I've got this sine gone with that sign, with one of those signs, one of those cosines with one of those, and result with cosine over sine. And we're good. A lot of these is just about a willingness to jump in there and try some things. Okay, Twin, oh, and that's the end of page three, so I'll end that video there.